What's up, everybody? Uh, joining me first up on the, uh, I guess, the first edition of the Philip Jordan Podcast, but long-time listeners, just continuation of what was Talking SEC. A uh, long-time friend of any show, any radio show podcast I've done uh, is Alan Bell. You can check him up, check him out over at CBS Sports Line, and he does uh, about every day, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, over on A to Z uh, Nashville as well. So, Alan, it's, it's always good to talk to you, and I appreciate you jumping on. Man, I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for having me. Oh yeah, I, you know it seems like every time I start something new, you're always the first guy I reach out to to come on. <laughs> hey, well, I feel honored, man. You you are always at top of the list because uh, I, I people who've listened to anything I've done over years when you're on, they said you two just sound like you're just two buddies just talking ball. I said, well, you know, we've been knowing each other for a few years, so we should, yeah. we should have that that comfort level. Yeah. So yeah, you're always like my. You're. I know Trevor Lawrence was the number one draft pick in the draft, but Alan. You are my number one draft pick when I ever <laughs> I do a podcast. Uh, dude, I like that, man. I appreciate that. So, anyways, uh, man, uh, what, what's all uh, been going on CBS Sports Line? I guess now y'all have uh, the odds out who would be uh, the next uh, team for Aaron Rodgers if the Packers trade him. <laughs> yeah, we do. And it's some interesting odds, right? So, if, if he were to be traded, you know, we've got the Denver Broncos, you know, as the favorite. And, uh, you know, after them – the odds kind of get significantly higher. You're going to see teams like the Raiders that are in there. Uh, even the Browns and the Seahawks, you know, well down the list, uh, you know, with the 49ers as well. But, I mean, everything that – everything screams that if Aaron Rodgers were to be traded, it's going to be to the Denver Broncos. Now, we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, that would be a massive, massive trade. Uh, but, yeah, man, like they, they look to be the favorite if that were to happen. You know, and of course, this you know we're sitting Thursday, and I'm, I'm excited about it because it's it's just a draft. Everybody's excited. Mm-hmm. All football fans, sports fans, we're excited. It's the NFL draft. It's you know we're it's one step closer to the season getting here. So we're all thinking, okay, Trevor Lawrence one, and you're gonna see you know Zach Wilson go number two. So, but then Aaron Rodgers stuff happened. No, come on, man. Aaron Rodgers people, this this was purpose, right? On purpose, right? Drop this news like three or four hours for the draft. I mean, just to get everybody off the draft and just talk about Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a reason why that came out that day, right? Like, what they wanted was, you know, that 49ers trade. And they wanted it to happen, you know, before the draft. Um, Which, you know, again, I mean, it's smart, you know, on a player's part because that's, you know, essentially when the most leverage is going to be there. Plus, you kind of put the team on a, you know, a little bit of a clock, right? Um, Obviously, it didn't happen. The 49ers, you know, uh, I think they tried to make a deal. And I think the Green Bay Packers were the ones, you know, that weren't, you know, going through with it. So, the 49ers end up drafting Trey Lance. Uh, And number three, and that's kind of how we sit here from there. But, yeah, man, like, there's no coincidence that we found that out that day. And it became, you know, so heavy. Um, Yeah, that uh, that was his camp pushing that pretty hard. And th- th- this feels like this has been something that's been brewing for a year, right? Since the Jordan Love draft pick last year, you can yeah. tell. I mean, obviously, Rodgers, I mean, I've heard some people say maybe that's what motivated him had the year he had this past season, MVP, everything. Who knows, you know, on that part, what, how his mind was working with that. But, I mean, is, is this also, do you think, maybe a power play by Aaron Rodgers? Because obviously there's the talk. He wants the GM out, and he you know, he wants certain things. He wants a certain contract. You, there's so many things you've heard come out in the last, you know, since Thursday. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do you see this potentially as maybe a power play by Aaron Rodgers with the Packers organization? Uh, a little bit. I, 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 honestly, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there are elements of that, right? But I, I think for the most part, I think this is honestly a guy who's just kind of done and, and yeah. you know, he he's realized like, it's almost like a marriage, you know, like, or, or, you know, a, a relationship that you've been in, you know, for a long time. And you just kind of reach a point where you're just done and, and you're just checked out. And I think that that's exactly where he is. And I'll give you some numbers as to why, right? Like, I mean, to be completely honest, you know, him, not having a you know a larger say you know in the organization has a lot to do with it, right? You look at the draft uh, throughout you know the the his time in Green Bay, they've selected what one uh, uh, offensive player uh, in the first round since 2012. That's Jordan Love, his replacement, who they didn't tell him by the way when that was going to happen. Like that's another big part of this, you know. For that to happen, and, and he has you know just no idea whatsoever, and is just blindsided by the fact that that they just used a first round pick in his prime to win a Super Bowl, and they won't give him any wide receivers, but they draft his replacement in the first round, right? Yeah. Like that was that was really you know really the uh, that was the end. But yeah, I mean he, they haven't the Packers haven't drafted a wide receiver in the first round since two thousand two. I mean mm-hmm. it's been that long. This is a stat. Think about this. This is a stat. 
That is crazy, but true. The Jaguars have already drafted more offensive skill players in the first round for Trevor Lawrence than the Packers ever have for Aaron Rodgers. That's a true story. Like, yeah. that's insane, right? Like, I mean, yeah. that's insane. Like, they get, the Jaguars got that accomplished in the first draft that they had. And, I mean, that, that just goes to show that, you know, Aaron Rodgers is, uh, I'll be completely honest with you, uh, he's paid a lot of bills up there. Right. Mm -hmm. He's carried a lot of dead weight up there and he's made a lot of players turn into pro bowl, all pro type guys. So again, I'm not saying that Aaron Rodgers is hundred percent correct. It's generally never that way in anything in life. There's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of, you know, faults on both sides, but Aaron's kind of got a point on this one. And look, they, it's not like they went out of their way. You know, it was different people in charge in front office, but Brett Favre kind of had the same situation because, I mean, I remember years before his whole deal, his last year there, he wanted Randy Moss and they wouldn't do it. You know, yeah. he wanted more weapons. So it's kind of, and it's, it's, it's a situation where they've been here before, like yeah, the different people there. But yeah, it's, not to interrupt you. Yeah. I mean, that's the weirdest thing that, that it's legitimately history playing out exactly the same. What, 20 years later? Like, it's crazy how, you know, just ironic and, 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 and close these two situations are. And really, you got to look at the last 30 years. How much? I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, Packers have won a lot of games, but a failure of a franchise. You've only won two Super Bowls with two Hall of Fame quarterbacks back to back that you had for what, 16 years apiece? Yep. Yeah. And I mean, you know, again, I mean, Aaron Rodgers has carried a lot of dead weight and made a lot of people money over there that quite frankly shouldn't have. Right. I, yeah. I mean, you know, nothing against Mike McCarthy and his coaching staff uh, for him to have the tenure that he did in Green Bay. Like that's Aaron Rodgers. That's yeah. not Mike McCarthy, you know, and, and, and again, you know, I'm not somebody that's always going to side with the players on this. It's a really tough situation, you know, because the NFL doesn't operate like, you know, the NBA does. And I think that there's good parts to that. Um, but in this instance, uh, dude, Aaron Rodgers has been carrying a lot of, a lot of people for a long time. And to put a bow on it, you know, people will say, well, you know, you don't want the player to get, you know, that much power, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know who just got that power and did something with it? Tom Brady. Yeah. How'd that work out? Right. He got to Tampa and within a month, they signed everybody that he wanted. Everyone went out and literally got everyone that he wanted. And what happened? They won a Super Bowl. So they went out of the way to make them happy. And, you know, and I got you got to wonder, too, if that's part of Aaron Rodgers thinking, too, because who did he lose to? In, they lose to an NFC championship game. Exactly. The Buccaneers. Yep. And he looks over there at Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady's got more Super Bowls than Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers, you know, obviously one of the greatest quarterbacks to play. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got to be saying, look, why can't I get that kind of, you know, power or respect? Maybe it's not maybe power, just respect that, you know, let, you know, let me kind of have a say, pick the players, do something to win a Super Bowl here. Because, I mean, it's been 2010. You know, and you had to think when the Packers won a Super Bowl, okay, they're going to win a couple. They hadn't been back. So, yep. and I guess, you know, kind of to end this conversation on Aaron Rodgers, oh, in your opinion, how do you think this plays out? Do you think Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback for the Packers when the 2021 season starts? Do you think they somehow mend this relationship or will Aaron Rodgers be playing somewhere else? That's a great question. Um, or hosting Jeopardy. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't think that there's any chance that he retires. Um, I, I, I just don't see that, that scenario playing out. Here's the hard part for him, which we all know. Good luck, man. Like, if the Packers don't want to trade him, there's nothing he could do. And yeah. not only is there nothing that he can do, you can't even, you know, after this new CBA, NFL players, you, you can't even do, like, the sit-out move, right? right? Because it doesn't toll a year on your contract. So he could sit out for 10 years and then want to come back and you're still under contract with the, with, uh, the Packers. So, I mean, he, he doesn't have any power in this situation. But, again, you know, if you're the Packers as well, I mean, you're a good team. And, you know, something like this can derail that very, very quickly. I, I honestly don't know what happens because this is a, a trade-level magnitude that we just don't see. I mean, this is what a once in a generational type thing of a player yeah. this good. Um, so I don't know what happens, but I mean, if I had to put my money down, he's playing for the Packers this year. I, I just don't know. If, I don't think they want to trade him. I think that they would fire the GM before they traded him. Yeah, I, I saw that story over the weekend. I said, I don't think it's right to give a player that kind of power like yeah. that. But he's Aaron Rodgers. I mean, and you I, have he, yeah. 
I, I feel the exact same way. Like, I, I, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I, I don't know, but it's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> like, that's it. You know, the, 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 he, he, there are very few players that, that could command that type of leverage. Unfortunately, he's one of them. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And, you know, and the draft was Thursday night, you know, started Thursday night. And like we said, he hit that story kind of hijacked the whole situation on, uh, on Thursday night. But, you know, and, we look at the draft and, and look, it was, I think everybody was just like, let's just get the third pick. Let's just figure out what's going on. And then, uh, but you know, of course, Trevor Lawrence went one. Everybody expected that. And then you get Zach Wilson. And, and I actually would like to get your thoughts because yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Zach, the Zach Wilson pick. I'm not saying that, but I do have concerns. One, it's the Jets. When have they done well with a quarterback <laughs> in yeah. the first round lately? Yeah, you, you still there? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Keep going. Sorry, I, th- I thought I lost you there for a second. Keep going, sir. Oh yeah, it's, uh, we we still good. We still good and everything. But yeah. uh, was Zach Wilson? And I'm one of these guys because I mean I watch college football all day on Saturday, then I watch the NFL Sunday. I feel like big playing in big games matter. He didn't do that, so I'm I have questions in the back of my mind. I think physically he's got all the tools, and I, I feel the same way with Trey Lance. I'll, anybody out there say I don't say I don't say anything about him? I do. But I guess for me, I'm just kind of one of these people. It's like, okay, he has all the talent, but the big games, you know, yeah. like Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Matt Jones. But I mean, would you with uh, Zach Wilson? Wh- where where are you sitting at with that pick? Well, I'll say this, man. Like, and I believe this about the quarterback position across the NFL completely. All right, I think that there are three buckets that quarterbacks come into. Okay, bucket one, like. Your Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. They're going to make any team good no matter what, right? And I think that Trevor Lawrence might be the only quarterback in this draft that could be in that category. I'm not saying that he is. I'm saying, but I think that his ceiling is higher than everyone else's, right? So mm-hmm. I think that he could be in that bucket. The second bucket is you're a pretty good quarterback and you're on a pretty good team. And that's kind of where I put most of these guys in here, right? So when we look at the end of the year, let's say all of the first-round quarterbacks uh, start week one and start the entire season, no injuries, they all play the same amount of games, okay? I think Trevor Lawrence on his own could create more than anybody else. I think Trey Lance with the 49ers could probably have the best season or maybe even Mac Jones with the Patriots, but I think the 49ers are a better team. But I think that's more about the team than it is Trey Lance. Nothing against him. I'm just saying, like, I think that, that, that you have quarterbacks that could be good, and if you couple them with a team that you build around, they're probably going to be pretty good. I, that, that's where I would put Zach Wilson. Like, I, I think that it's going to be, you know, uh, you're going to have to build around him. You, you're going to have to make – a, a solid roster. You're going to have to have a good defense. You're going to have to have good weapons with them, a good offensive line, a good run game, right? Doesn't have to be the best in every category, but the better that you make the team, the better he's going to be. And that's generally 99% of quarterbacks. And then the third bucket is guys that legitimately come in that, yeah, they might be able to play. They might not, you know, who knows, you know, uh, 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 Shane Bouchelle, you know, uh, maybe even a Kyle Trask. I don't know, you know, uh, guys that, you know, have some talent. They were good. Uh, we'll see, you know, if they do anything in the NFL. So long story short, I put Zach Wilson in that second bucket. Like, I think he could be pretty good, but you're going to have to build around him. You're going to have to build a team, and the Jets don't have that at all. I mean, we just saw Sam Darnold. They did nothing. They've already done more to help Zach Wilson than they did to help Sam Darnold. Like, they did nothing for the guy, right? So now he's in Carolina, a little bit better of a team, uh, uh, certainly a better coaching situation. Um, but, yeah, I mean – that's kind of where I see Zach Wilson is that the better that you make the team, the better that pick is going to look and it takes time and it's not easy to do. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the bucket. It, it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And yeah. And I agree with you. The Jets did do have done a lot more for uh, Wilson than they have. Uh, you know, they did Sam Darnold, obviously, yeah. but, and, and I bring up Trey Lance. Now I will say this, you're right. He is in a better situation than Zach Wilson because yeah. he's with Kyle Shanahan. And we've yeah. seen what he's done with other quarterbacks. And, you know, so, and that's a really good team. They trade up, get the number three spot. Oh, <laughs> so I guess that brings me to a big question. What in the world's next for Jimmy Garoppolo? <laughs> yeah. See, that's a good question, right? Because, okay. Yeah. You look across the NFL, look, man, like this is, and me and you have been talking about this for two years now. Look across yeah. the NFL. It is not 
the NFL of five years ago, of 10 years ago, right? Where there were no quarterbacks. Look, every team has a starting quarterback. Like supply heavily outweighs the demand. Okay. So I don't know where you're going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo to Houston. Other than that, like I really do not know another team that needs a starting quarterback. Right. Like, look at the Broncos. They're, they're talking about, you know, the Aaron Rodgers situation. They have Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. Right. Yep. You look at the Saints like after Drew Brees. They have Jameis Winston uh, and uh, what's his name? Um, uh, how did oh, I Tyson just, Hill? Yeah. Tyson Hill. Right. Like the, these situations are pretty deep. Like there mm -hmm. are not many teams, especially for Garoppolo, who you're going to have to pay. I mean, the, 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 he's got a what? A hundred million dollar contract coming with him. Like, I don't know many teams that are going to afford that. If Mac Jones becomes the starter, let's say day one, you know, for New England, I don't know if they could trade Cam and he doesn't even have a big contract with him. Right. Mm -hmm. So like that's that's what makes it so difficult is I don't know what San Francisco would be able to do if they were to trade him. It would be very similar to how the Dolphins did with Ryan Tannehill. And I'm not comparing the two contracts. What I'm saying is San Francisco would have to eat some of that money because the team would just say that there's no way that we're paying all that. You know, we, we just don't need it, you know. So, yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you, but that's kind of it. So the answer is it might just be Jimmy Garoppolo for the 49ers this year. And, you know, Trey Lance truly is kind of like Jordan Love in, in Green Bay for the future. Yeah, and the thing with Garoppolo, and I think, I think some football fans, NFL fans, want their quarterback to be Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. But there's <laughs> yeah, nothing luck. wrong – with having a Jimmy Garoppolo or a Kirk Cousins or someone of that level, if yeah. you put the proper team or Pat Mahomes, people don't want, want Pat Mahomes now too. Everybody wants that quarterback. Yeah. And Garoppolo, the one year he stayed healthy for all 16 games, what happened? The 49ers went to the Super Bowl. Should have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for three quarters, they outplayed Kansas City, but yeah. Pat Mahomes is just that level of quarterback that yeah. can turn it around in a quarter. But so it's like with Garoppolo, he's not a horrible quarterback either. So, but it kind of feels like if you hear a lot of radio shows or some people talk about him, that he's like this, he's like one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Like he's not. Look but, at his and, record. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But he doesn't stay healthy. I, I, yeah. For me, I wonder if that's kind of like the biggest concern in San Francisco over him. Not, not his ability to play or Shanahan to work with him. It's just the fact is he just doesn't stay healthy. He got hurt in New England, he's got hurt in San Francisco. And then you bring up New England. I, for me, when I was watching the draft, when Mac Jones got drafted, I said, there's no way he's going to New England now. Yeah. No. I, I, no. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. Like, once Mac Jones was taken, no. Garoppolo's not going there because they're not going to pay that money. Look what look what Belichick and the Patriots did this offseason in terms of yeah. spending. They went and got everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why, yeah, I mean, one, they're not going there. Uh, Garoppolo's not going there. Two, you know, I, I don't know, you know, how that quarterback situation, you know, works out. I, I, let me say this. Belichick does love Cam Newton, right? Josh McDaniels likes Cam Newton. So, I mean, th this is still Cam's job for sure. Mac is not coming in and, you know, immediately being the starter. I'm not saying he can't win the job. I'm just saying it's Cam's job right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at New England, they're getting, you know, five or six star players back on defense who opted out last year. They've got you know, all of their weapons that they signed this year, including, you know, uh, Hunter Henry at tight end, John Smith at tight end. Um, you know, they, they're, they're doing things to fix their offensive line. They're trying to fix their run games. Well, like, I got to give them credit. Like, they have spent a ton of money, um, you know, to fix that offense, which quite frankly needed it because it was legitimately Cam Newton, and that's it, last year. Like, I know people want to give Cam a hard time, but he, he, was, he was on his own last year. There, there, there was no one else, right? So – you know, that team's going to be a little bit better. Um, but again, you know, yeah, I mean, Garoppolo's not going out there. Um, it's just too much money. So you don't think Jarrett Stidham has a shot at the starting quarterback <laughs> position in New England? No. Uh, and here's why. Uh, if Jarrett Stidham had a shot, uh, he would have had it last year. Yeah, right? I agree. Like, it, it, once last year came and went and he couldn't win that job, it was over. I, I finally had to uh, – uh, take my medicine on that one because uh <laughs> i was uh of course i write about auburn for last world calls football so i was always the jared stidham apologist that it was gus malzahn was the problem and uh not you know jared stidham <laughs> yeah uh, but uh i've kind of finally conceded that i was wrong hey on let that me one. let me say this man like look at the nfl dude like uh, it is not easy to project which quarterbacks are gonna be mm -hmm. good great like i mean honestly look tom brady no one had a clue Aaron Rodgers sat in the green room of the draft 
almost the entire first round. Patrick Mahomes, yeah, the Chiefs traded up, but there were, what, two or three quarterbacks taken in front of him? Like, it, it is not easy, man. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, it is difficult to project that position. It is really, really difficult. It, it, it might be the most difficult projection in all of professional sports. Like, it, the, the, there, I feel like there is more... Um, what's the word? There's more risk and reward than at that position than any other. Like you kind of have an idea in the NHL of goalies. You kind of have an idea, you know, of point guards in the, like, yeah, there are hit or misses, but I I feel like there are way more at the quarterback position in the NFL. It's very difficult, man. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, look, you know, I brought Brett Favre up earlier. He was, you know, he was a second round draft pick. I mean, Drew Brees was a second round draft pick. I'm telling you, man, like there are very few, like, you know, the, the, the Peyton Manning style, like goes first overall, everybody kind of thinks so like that, that is very, very rare, like very rare. It, it does not happen that much at all. And, you know, I don't know if the, how it was the age group listening or watching this video, but uh quarterback wise, there's a lot of people out there don't realize there was arguments back then between Ryan Leaf and oh, Peyton yeah. Manning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I'll tell you this. I'll take it. I'll take it back one step further. <clears throat> when Peyton Manning was recruited to Tennessee, he also came along another four or five star quarterback, a guy named Brandon Stewart, that there are arguments between those two. Right. Like, I mean, yeah, like it, it, it's not this, you know, simple science at that position. It, it, it's it's incredible. The percentages of hit to misses. Uh, it, it, it's wild, man. Yeah, and then you know, last quarterback, and uh, we we were jumping in all these quarterbacks here on the on the show today. Uh, Justin Fields, and you know, yeah. my whole thing, this whole lead up for the draft, I I feel like, and this is my opinion, that he was not treated fairly. That there was some, okay, yes, he had some inconsistencies at Ohio State this past year. But, yeah, you know, it was a tough situation. Anybody in the Big Ten this year, and they only played a handful of games. You know, yeah, I, I think if they had played a normal season in college football especially of course they did nobody did because of covid i think he would have shown progression to what he was the previous season that's just kind of my opinion it was just an up and down season you didn't know he didn't play with a lot of his best players some weeks i mean like i said i know a lot of people had that so i mean i know he goes to the bears and <laughs> poor andy dalton he thought his quarterback won probably not 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 for long now uh but you know just the field stuff that, that was kind of one of the things i didn't think I hated how that kind of happened him. He got tore down a lot. I think he's a really super talented kid. Uh, you know, with the Justin Fields thing, what was what was your take on his lead up and uh, how you think that it is a fit with the Bears and what Matt Nagy wants to do? Yeah, so I, I agree with you. Yeah, like it, that absolutely happened to him, and you you hate it for anybody, just yeah. as you know, a human being, right? I'll say this: that happens every year with the quarterbacks. Now, yeah. you know, uh, I, I can't explain it. You know, as to why uh, Justin Fields is a really smart guy. Ohio State's offense is not easy to run. Like that, mm. That's an NFL style offense. And, you know, Justin Fields has proven his athleticism and he's proven his intelligence, right? But it does happen every single year. And there's always, especially at that position, because it is so, you know, um, magnified it, it, and even more than any other, you know, pro draft of positions, right? The, the quarterback position is just talked about ad nauseum uh, look at mac jones that guy mm-hmm. slid nobody expected that at all everyone thought he'd be gone by three right and he actually slid further so yeah it, it's all it, it's like that every single year you can't really ever explain it you can't really pick who that guy's gonna be um but i mean for the bears i thought that i thought it hit on two levels all right one because he just genuinely could be a really good quarterback yeah. i don't know he might be he might not be i don't know but he's got the opportunity to do it He's good enough to do it. Two, for that fan base who legitimately has been ready to fire that GM and head coach for two straight years, for them, for Bears fans to be happy about that pick, like that kind of works in your favor too. And I'm not yeah. saying that you should draft based on who the fan base is going to be happy about, but it doesn't hurt when it works out that way, right? Like yeah. this, this was just kind of a nice like thing that lined up to where it's positive for everybody involved, right? So, you know, we'll see. Uh, obviously, you know, Andy Dalton is going to go in as the starting quarterback, probably starts week one. Uh, we might not see Fields for a while, but I, I don't believe in Andy Dalton. Like, I, I have nothing against Andy Dalton either, but I, I, I just do not see that as a fit at all. I see Fields fitting 
a lot of what Matt Nagy wants to do. It's a complicated offense. Um, it, it moves on the fly. Um, and, you know, you have to be a little athletic, but it's not like, one, I'm not saying that Justin Fields is a mobile QB. He's not. He's a quarterback. But what I'm saying is, is it it, it does help to be athletic. Like Mitch Trubisky had some athleticism. He, ju he just wasn't accurate. He just yeah. couldn't get the ball where it needed to be. Justin Fields can do that. He's got a much stronger arm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that he's got an opportunity to do it. And the Bears aren't that bad of a team. They're not that bad of a roster. They definitely need to get this offensive line figured out because if they don't do that, I, I, I don't care what – you could bring in Aaron Rodgers. You're going to get him killed, right? Mm -hmm. So they need to fix that for sure. But, yeah, man, like long story short, like I thought it was a good pick. Um, it, I, I would have done it too. If I were the bear sitting right there, I would have absolutely made that decision as well. Yeah, I would have too. And then there's maybe one day there'll be teams uh, that were ahead of them that wish they would have would have got Justin Fields as well. <laughs> uh, we're running at 26 minutes. I had a bunch of other things that I was going to hit, but uh, I, I was going just going to give you the floor on the show. Uh, is there anything uh, else with the draft? You know, we talked to all the quarterbacks here. Something that really just stood out to you uh, from the draft over the weekend? Um, I'll say this. Um. You know what I found interesting is you look at wide receivers and their quarterbacks that they were drafted to the teams, okay? So, say Jamar Chase, all right? LSU guy goes to an LSU quarterback, all right, in Cincinnati. You look at Devontae Smith, Alabama guy, goes to Jalen Hurts, an Alabama guy, you know, it, it, with the Eagles. You look at uh, Jalen Waddell, an mm -hmm. Alabama guy, goes to Miami with Tua. Like, I was noticing this, that there are similarities to it. And I don't know the answer if it's good, bad, could not mean, could mean nothing. I, I really don't know. But I'm interested to see how this plays out because I've kind of thought about that of, you know, especially all three of these quarterbacks being very, very young, you know, aligning them with players that they're comfortable with. Like how much does that help and benefit them as a quarterback of just, having familiar faces, right? You look at uh, Thaddeus Moss, the tight end that was at LSU that was with uh, the Washington football team. Well, they released him. The Cincinnati Bengals signed him, right? He didn't have a good year at all last year in Washington. But, you know, will it help him as a tight end being, you know, around a quarterback that he's familiar with? And with Burrow, does it help him even more? So, I'm interested at that. Like that stuck out to me very quickly, and I'm I'm just interested to see how this kind of science experiment plays out. Let's just hope Moss can block because that's what Burrow is going to need. I know they oh drafted three offensive linemen, but Burrow got sacked 32 times in 10 games. So, uh, you know, I, I'll I'll say my piece on that real quickly. I thought they should have went offensive line instead yep. of Chase. That was just my opinion, just because Burrow. I think they've got good receivers there, anyways. I yep. think offensive line is where they need to. Go. I mean, I know they picked three offensive linemen up, but Penny Sewell was right there, and you could have got one of the best players in the draft. But you know, we'll we'll see how that works out <laughs> for them with with, with Chase, and uh, let's hope you know they can just protect Burrow because he showed some things this past year. Oh, year. absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's 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 going to be the real deal there in Cincinnati. So, uh, it, you know, and then Allen, I like to say once as always, appreciate you coming on uh, on the show on the first edition of the Philip Jordan Podcast for Blue Wire Hustle. And if the listeners want to follow you, where can they find you and all the great stuff you're doing? Yeah, definitely. So first off, yeah, I appreciate you having me back on, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to talk to you again. Um, yeah, I mean, you can follow me, you know, at CBS Sportsline, so just sportsline.com, uh, or on Twitter at AllenBell247. All right, sounds good, Allen. And once again, I appreciate you coming on the show, and I look forward to talking again sometime down the road. Hey, you too, buddy. Thank you, man.